Today on episode three of the Lawson Brothers podcast, we're going to be talking about the dangers that lurk around the corner when we give too much weight to the things that don't really matter. Welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for jumping in and listening to episode three of the Lawson Brothers podcast. We've had a blast so far, haven't we, James? It's been phenomenal. Yeah, let's just take a second just to introduce ourselves real quick and remind people who we are. Not that that's important, but we want you to know who uh, is talking to you. I'm Sam Lawson. And I am Sam's older brother, James Lawson, and we are thrilled. Thanks for taking the time to listen. I think we're we we started this thing uh, with not a whole lot of idea where it was going to go, yeah. um, and, and we still don't know. It's episode three, but uh, the fact that people are listening uh, is encouraging, so we're grateful. Um, you know, I, I think it would be helpful here maybe just to, to pause for a moment and say, hey, you know, we want to do this not because the world needs another podcast, mm-hmm. uh, but because we're trying to create something that uh, will add value uh, to your life as a listener. Uh, you know, we want it to be fun and encouraging, uh, but also we want it to be to be helpful um, and to do, to be something that um, helps uh, helps the world uh, become a little better and brighter place. Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens or, iron. Or the other tagline, Sam. Yeah, the away. other the other thing we know is that we don't know anything. Kind of to your point, I was kind of blown away just a few days ago, um, just talking to some different people. There are some folks who are actually listening to the podcast, which makes it really just makes us want to take um, take it a little bit more uh, seriously on the front end. We just want to we want to make sure that we're giving you something that's that's worthwhile, right? If you're going to listen yeah, to that's it, a, that's exactly right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, well, can we do a can we do a quick little maybe like a sentence recap of the first couple of episodes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody's jumping in here. No doubt, no doubt. Episode one, uh, just kind of application. God's grace. Um, a gift that he gives us, right, is something that carries us through life. Uh, the Blue Flame Way is something that you'll hear us talking about and wishing you um, a happy day. Uh, at the That was weird phrasing there, but uh, we're going to oh, wish you a happy, happy blue flame. Happy day, happy day. When not, I wash uh, what's my the, sins away. Happy, happy days. That's what I was going for. The happy old, days. Off the Sunday, old, Monday, the old, Monday that's happy that's days. Yeah. Shout out to Arthur Fonzarelli. Yeah. Richie. The, the Fonz. The Fonz. The Fonz and Richie. Um, yeah, I was, was not expecting you to say that just then, <laughs> but you took it there. Hey, there you you took go. it there. there Old go. TV land has Old some TV good land. classics. Let, right. Let's talk about some TV land classics sometime. <laughs> not today. Yeah, <laughs> Blue Flame Way. Episode yeah, two. Episode episode two. two. Uh, I think really just spent the most time talking about our influences yep. and how God has used every bit of our lives, um, every bit of your life to bring you back to him. Yep. And uh, that's really the big thing. Uh, we kind of landed at a place that said we want to – uh, if we can use it like this, be students of our life circumstances. There you go. Does that make sense? There you go. Learn, learning in every moment. Eat the eat the meat and leave the bones. Eat the chicken, spit out the bones. There you go. There you go. Yep. Whatever. I yeah. think <laughs> Whatever. That, that sounds like a Dabo Sweeney quote. I don't know if it is, <laughs> but it sounds like something Dabo <laughs> Sweeney would true. say. It's probably true. Dabo, if you're listening to this, we'd love to get you on the podcast. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> All the way down in anybody, Somerville, anybody South Carolina. Anybody knows Dabo, send in the podcast. I don't think people want to talk to Dabo right now. I, I think know. Dabo still might be a little bitter. I don't know, man. About football season this last year. He hired Garrett Riley. Good hire. Good, good hire. Good hire. Good hire. Excited about He made some quick cuts, though, right after the end of the he season. Did. Made some made some moves. Made yeah. Some moves. Yeah. Excited for Clemson Tiger football this there next year. There you go. And also excited for, got to shout out the Tar Heels. Excited for the UNC Tar Heels, Drake May is going to return, and he's going to make a run for the Heisman. Just, just calling it right calling now. Calling it right now. I'm calling Drake it right May now. For Heisman. I'm calling it Drake May for Heisman 2023. It's going to be a crazy year. There you go. Yeah, we want to get started this uh, week with uh, just one sentence that kind of captures the whole episode. But hang on, before we get to that. Oh, oh, I forgot about that. Talk about. I did forget uh, about that. We, we're going to introduce a new segment. Yeah. Uh, based on some feedback from episodes <laughs> one and two. Um, lot, and, lot, not some. There were a lot. There were a lot of pieces of feedback. A lot of feedback. A lot of 
there's feedback a lot from of, episode twenty-two. A lot of feedback. Uh, and this new segment, uh, <laughs> we we bounced around a few different names, yeah. but we're gonna call it mm. confessions. Confessions. And, and here's why. Uh, in the Augustine. in the fifth century. I think it was the fifth century. This might be it for a future episode. You're the history if major if at the wrong. table. Uh, You're but, the history but major. There was a there was an, an African bishop uh, named Augustine or Augustine, depending on how you like to pronounce his name. Okay. Um, and he wrote a book called Confessions. Mm. And his book, Confessions, was deep <laughs> theology, brilliant. I mean, like Augustine, yeah. you know, when it comes to church fathers and theology, mm-hmm. like he is brilliant. We have confessed that the only thing we know is that we don't know anything. And what we have learned from episodes one and two is that might be the only thing that we got right in episodes one and two. So confessions, That might have been the only thing we got right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. It's going to be a, a moment for us to, uh, to go back and say, hey, uh, we messed up on that one. Or that one. Or that one. Or all of it. Um, so, Sam, uh, take us away with some confessions today, man. I will. I guess confession, confession number, one. number one. Confession number <laughs> one. Wow, th- this this list is going to be so extensive it, over it could, time, dude. Uh, episode one, James said, confidently, we're going to plan to keep this <laughs> podcast between 20 and 25 minutes. Episode I two. I think I said 20 to 30. No, 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 no. I, no, no. I don't think you well, said. Maybe, maybe I did. You definitely didn't say 30. <laughs> no, you said like 20 to 25 minutes. And episode two actually took the number 25 and flipped it. This was the uncut version. This was an un- unedited version. We landed at like 52 minutes for episode two, which uh, which is funny and also makes sense. If you've ever been to Pinewood on a Sunday morning <laughs> or downtown, you totally know one of the people talking to you is a little long-winded at times. Great content, but well, long-winded. Well, if the if the worship leader would just quit talking in between <laughs> songs and just sing the songs. Yeah, yeah, there's some of that going on. There's some of that going on. But no, I really want to try to, we're, we do want to try to like bring yes. it down on time. So confession number one is we uh, we told a story about the time. <laughs> Confession number two. Last week. Thomas Blank actually told me this uh, at a small group. And Tori. And he sent uh, me a text. And sent you a text. Well, this isn't related. Oh, we'll get we'll get to the second thing. Tom, <laughs> Thomas called us out on two there things. There you go. Tom. The first thing he called we us love out. Thomas. He he called you. Oh oh man, I love Thomas. <laughs> yeah, Thomas is. All, his tats are sick. His tats <laughs> are sick. Um, very inspirational, as far as the tat game goes. Um, Thomas. <laughs> What? Going, tat tat going, game's going. a thing, bro. Keep People going. compare tattoos, and they're like, that guy has got some sick tattoos. That dude probably cried when he we're got gonna, his neck tattooed, et cetera. We're going to on here one day to talk about your tattoos. Man, and we can do that. I'm not, I'll, I'll save my content for that, <laughs> for that episode. There you go. Um, confession number two is that, remember when you said at the very beginning of episode one, you said that this is like, this is a podcast without any edits. Uh-huh. You said no edits. Uh-huh. And then like the version that we released was like full of edits. <laughs> I made so many jokes that I probably should not have made um, on a podcast that people are going to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to you. It's so real. But you know, yeah, as you gotta let saying, Braden edit. Braden's sitting in the corner like, no, this is totally getting edited. Yeah. This yeah. Is totally this is edited. totally getting edited, which is fine. That's fine. Um, so that's fine. we love Braden. So that's, that's two confessions, <laughs> third confession. And here, here's like the actual list. This is actual, actual list. list. Actual yeah. list. All right. First one to all you veterans and servicemen who are a part of the air force. I owe a big apology to, <laughs> I was totally wrong about where, <laughs> Integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all you do came from. I was so confident that it came from the Marines. I even put dad's name into it. I threw mom's name into it. <laughs> I threw other people's names into it and gave them credit for something. And then, and then Braden, Braden part of a, a Braden. former Marine, <laughs> didn't even. <laughs> Braden's like, I've never heard this before, but I'm not going to say anything. No, he rolled with it. But uh, to, to Braden's defense, Thomas did say also um, a veteran, or well, he's an active serviceman, active. actually. He said that there are a lot of like crossover uh, motto words. But so, that is that is word for word the Air Force core values. Hundred percent. Yeah, um, we knew Dad plagiarized the the Blue Flame <laughs> way from somewhere. He did. We just didn't know from where. And he plagiarized it better than we thought he did. Or word for he word. He did it word for yeah, word. He just, he's like, hey, that's good. I'm straight from the I'm Air Force, dog. Thing right there. Yeah, use it every day. He did the, it. The uh, the second confession. This is uh, not a mo- this is not a this, confession. This was this wasn't you. This was me. Yeah. Uh, we finished recording episode two, <laughs> and Braden looked at me and said, "You need to be nicer mm. to your brother." Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Sam, Sam's like, I've been saying that my whole life. I've been saying um, that, my but whole then Braden followed that up by saying, 
being Sam, you could also be meaner. So the just tier- want to clarify. Uh, yeah. Just want to clarify. I do love my brother, um, and I have a tendency to be overly sarcastic. It's my love language. You got thick skin there, Jim Boy, and so do I. So, you know, <laughs> so if you're you listening, throw a punch, I'm going to throw one back. There you go. Well, if you're listening and you're thinking James is mean to his brother, I apologize, Sam, publicly, probably for the last time. James? And it probably will happen again. Shake my hand, bro. That's the sweetest thing you've ever done in front of anybody. <laughs> there sweetest you go. thing. Don't get Actually, the other, the other thing, you remember when you gave me your jacket at Christmas? You gave me your really nice patched camo jacket at Christmas time. Oh yeah, I did do that. Was it? I don't think it was. It was two Christmases. Actually, yeah, it was not um, not, not Christmas twenty two. It was Christmas twenty one. Yes, it was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. No. Yeah, you just gave I me your jacket. I, you that. I put it on, and I guess what happens normally when I wear your clothes is I look better in them. <laughs> And you're like, you can have that. And I'm like, sweet, man. I just got wait, a wait. lot of hand-me-downs. Was that an insult? Yeah, you went with it, too. You didn't even like I thought, it. must have been true. Because <laughs> no, you went see, with it. I, I, thought, I thought you were complimenting my style and saying that you look better when you put on my clothes. I was. Like you, it's an improvement over your normal style. Look, That's dog. what I thought you were saying. Look, look, but look. what you were saying was that you look better in my clothes than I look in my clothes. Look, it's like it's like. <laughs> All right, that's enough. That's enough. It's like it, uh, third confession. Third I'm confession. Glad, I'm glad you cut me off. Three. I don't this know. is uh, the final confession. This is the third the one. Yeah, yeah, we have settled the overarching versus overarching debate. Our our friend Meredith Provost, the uh, PA, uh, PA, PA Meredith Provost, Meredith Provost, the Meredith Provost, the Meredith Provost. Y'all. Yeah. She's awesome, yeah. but she she left us a, a comment, yeah. which means that she typed it <laughs> into the computer for us to read. And I, I think Braden was it posted on the the Facebook post of the podcast. You gotta go read it. You gotta go read it on the po- on, on the Facebook. Page. Is it on Facebook? But she settled the overarching versus overarching debate, and she spelled out the word and said it's O V E R A R C H I N G. You know settled. what I you know what I really do settled. appreciate. You know what I appreciate? What's that? She usually does know her stuff, though. She does. When it comes to that kind of thing, like a detail like that, she knows her stuff. And so we we have no idea how she's pronouncing it. No, she just spelled it. She just spelled it and left a comment on Facebook. I, I was about you, to try thank to spell you, it. Meredith Provost. Bad idea. Thank you, yeah. Meredith Provost. Thanks, Meredith. So appreciate it. All right. Uh today I'm gonna intro this subject and I'm gonna kick it to you, man. Is that hey, all right? That would Y'all hear the high five? You're doing a front we got, mic. We, have, I, we, front we, mic. we don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. Um, 10.34 a.m. right now. That's what time is it? So we need to... When do we start this? I have no idea. Okay. Um, let's just go. Let's just go. 15 let's minutes. Just go. 15, yeah. minutes. 15, 15 minutes we're from here. we talk today about, yeah. about social media. About yeah. social media. Yeah. Um, and just a couple of qualifying statements as we begin. Nothing is... When it comes to the social media world, it's not completely bad. And it's not completely good. Yep. And social media in and of itself is neutral, can be used for good, can be used for bad. We're sitting in here with Braden Kirshner, who is the social media guru. Braden has used social media so well here at Summer of a Baptist Church right, to, right. to reach new people, to encounter uh, people who are right now are far from God or outside of the walls of the church. And, uh, man, we've seen incredible things the last few years since bringing you on staff here. Um, and we've seen people give their lives to Christ online, watching church online. Uh, Braden's had incredible conversations with people, uh-huh. um, you know, and Braden's over in the corner right now pointing up in the air, yeah. um, you know, giving all the credit to, to God. But Braden, Which is what Braden does. Braden's Braden got a does. great heart. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, and has been phenomenal using social media yeah. as a vehicle for good. Uh, you know, and that's 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 a great thing. But then there's also there's the dark side of social media too, um, and for a lot of people, uh, you know, it's it's not a it's not a helpful thing. It's not a healthy thing. It's um, a, a vehicle for comparison and all kind of things that that ultimately rob value from life rather than add value. And we're gonna get to that here in a moment. I'll let you share some of that. But yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I just wanted thought it might be fun just for a second. Can I can I well, share? Well, let let's let's jump back for just a second. Okay. Okay. We wanna we wanna make clear. To you, like we want to clearly say, hey, this episode, like overall, is about like where our attention's going. Sure, sure. Where our attention's going, and that's why we're talking about social media. Sure. At the end of la- episode two, you guys, you and Braden both thought it would be a great idea to be like, you know, we know Sam's off of social media, right? And you right. kind of asked me, 
to talk about that. So that's kind of where this came that's where from. That's where we're going. That's where we came from. But here are some good things yeah. that I have found on social media. Okay, let's later. talk about it. You can learn some stuff. Yeah. Um, this is a great meme. Have you seen the meme with the angry cat sitting behind a <laughs> plate of vegetables, you know, looking like it's like hissing at somebody? And then on the other side of the meme, there's the lady okay. who's pointing her finger. She's highly upset. Uh, this meme, the lady pointing her finger is saying, I can do all things through Christ. And the cat is responding, you skip church when it rains. <laughs> 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 that was on social media. So that's a bit. Can I look at these? with you? Why yeah, you can, you see, can you see? If you turn the screen. There you go. Um, some other <laughs> social media content. There's so many pictures of Judah right now. Yeah, a bunch of pictures. Of, I'm, I'm scrolling iPad. through my, my camera roll because I just screenshot random things. Roughly one in three. This is from social media. This is the, the Twitter platform. Roughly one in three Americans, 32%, including nearly half of men, 46%, are confident they could safely land a passenger airplane in an emergency situation, relying only on the assistance of the air traffic control. Just one in five women say the same. So men <laughs> men are confident they could land the plane. Women... Um, are not confident in men to land the plane. Tom Hanks landed a plane in the water. Do you remember that in Sully? That was a movie. But yes. that wasn't that, that that wasn't Tom in real life. Tom didn't do that in real life. Ridiculous. Ah, uh, high jokes. Uh, this is a great thing on social media. Coffee is the <laughs> richest source of polyphenols in the Western diet. I, if I didn't say that right, maybe PA Meredith Provost can correct. Meredith, let us know. Correct polyphenols. Polyphenols in the Western diet. Coffee yeah. contains over a thousand compounds that protect your cells and tells bad cells to die. It helps you live longer and it reduces chronic inflammation. Uh, I had three cups of coffee this morning, so I'm grateful to know that. Let me propose a pronunciation. Three cups. And I was going to. And, and, and even if that had been the opposite, I would still have drunk three cups of Is coffee. That normal? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Oh, like that's just the morning. I'll have more later. So go ahead, Sam. I was just gonna like <laughs> submit a pronunciation for that word. Go for it. Polyphenols. Polyphenols. Could be. Who knows? Could be. Could be. If somebody knows they're gonna. That's right. <laughs> we are not <laughs> biologists. Uh, well, at all. Or are we? I don't know. Is the Christian a biologist? In another, in another, in another mm. biology world, mm. um, the Dallas Lots. Zoo recently was closed. <laughs> this is from Twitter. The Whoa. Dallas Zoo is closed today due to a serious situation. They have an ongoing situation at the zoo right now with a code blue. That is a non-dangerous animal that is out of its habitat. And, and here's the, the explanation of Code Blue, non-dangerous animal. One of our clouded leopards was not in its habitat when the team arrived this morning and is unaccounted for at this time. Wow. You can't open the zoo when, when the non-dangerous clouded leopard is walking around. And I think there was one more uh, that I thought might be worth sharing. Oh, two more, two more, two more. Do we have time for two more? Uh, yeah, hurry. One million seconds ago was 11 days ago. One billion seconds ago was 1992. One trillion seconds ago was 31,000 BC. Social media. You can only find facts like that on and social it, media. And it says, um, let that sink in. Let that sink in for a moment. Let Last, it sink. Last, but certainly not least, this was actually from this morning. Beyonce chased by a camel after her concert in Dubai last week. TMZ reports and TMZ has the video. How about that? Can we, I, I, Can we're, we answer We're going to do something here. We're going to An answer, answer the phone. Answer Tara right Colin Tara's calling live on speaker. Put it on speaker. On Put it on speaker. But tell her. Hey, Tara, this is James, obviously, um, here with Sam and Braden. You're on speakerphone. We're actually recording the podcast for next week right Hey, now. Tara. Sweet. So, you got anything you want to drop to us? We, we we're, we're talking about social media right now. So, any any wisdom on social media right now? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Please, now, yeah, like we were literally. I've, I'm, I have okay. the phone held okay, up to sweet. the microphone right now. Um, okay, awesome. Don't um, get on social media while you're working. I don't know. Don't get on social media while you're working. I love that. We talked, you know, Tara, we talked about having you on the podcast. This is not how I thought that would happen, but this is phenomenal. This is even better. Awesome. Um, hey, I gotta go. The school is calling me. That's what I was calling you about. All right. Okay. All right. Love you. Oh, my. That, that's okay to talk about. The school's calling. Okay. And she was calling you to talk about that. Yeah, hopefully it's okay. Real life parental things. That's right. That's right. Okay. Love That's Tara. Right. Love Tara. Thanks yep. for being a good sport, Thanks, Tara. Tara. We love you. Yep. Can we get into it? Social media. Can we get so, into it? Yeah. So Sam, you made the comment last podcast that you are off social media entirely right now. Why Why are you off social media and, and what uh, led you to that point? <laughs> I think my first Twitter account with uh, 
Do you remember my first Twitter, 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 my first Twitter account? I do. Do you remember my first Twitter account? I I had not thought about that in a long time until this morning. (laughs) I don't even remember. I know it was my name. I don't remember anything else about it other than I followed like every single one of your Wofford football player teammates and they followed me back. (laughs) And I thought I was like living on cloud nine. I was talking to them. You were probably what? 13 or 14? No, dude. When you went, when you graduated high school, I was 10. Right. But I'm saying, like, but, but in order for you to like have a phone with access to Twitter, you had to have been like 13. Yeah, it was probably like 7th or 8th grade. Yeah, yeah. Or ninth grade. Yeah, and so, Braden, my my friends at Wofford that I played football with started like sending me screenshots. And they're like, is this your brother? Uh, and it was my brother who had made himself a Twitter account and was following everybody on the Walford football team and likes messy. You know, he's DMing them, he's tweeting at them. <laughs> I, I remember specifically like the the best conversations that I had took place between like me and James Otto, <laughs> me and Jared Singleton, oh, Jeremy man. and Josh Holt, the Holt brothers, the Holt brothers, <laughs> studs. All of them are studs, but yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was your intro to social media. Not that was right. intro to social media. And then from there, you were, you were on Instagram for a little while. Did you ever have a Facebook page? I had Facebook. On Facebook? I had okay. Facebook, yeah. Um, did you do the Snapchat thing? Um, I did Snapchat uh, early in high school. Okay. Yeah, the first okay. couple years of high school. So you were, I mean, you kind of, you kinda, so I was, I didn't have a social media account until I got to college. And I made a Facebook page my freshman year of college. That's kind of when you first got a I, that was, that right? was, I had a smartphone for the first time. For the first yeah, time in college, yeah. Freshman year of college. Okay. Um, so like I was, uh, you know, I was coming through school a little bit ahead of when social media really blew. Like Facebook was big. My, I remember MySpace being a big deal. Like yeah. Middle school. Um, I, I that was I, your space, not MySpace, because I, I, I didn't have that. one. I never had one. Yeah. Um, that was a joke. Actually. But but you, I, but my my point there, right. you were coming through middle school, high school college like when social media really blew up i think so and like everybody i i mean i I remember instagram going from you know a couple million users to like billions of users almost overnight it seemed like didn't it Braden? and then then snapchat hit the scene and there was you know vine was in there somewhere and there vine vine was a big deal uh there was a thing called shmuel um or smule i might be saying that wrong smule i've never heard of Uh, it's basically like voice it's like your mouth and songs and singing along, but you can actually tick, sing too. TikTok I think I might be wrong. TikTok, TikTok for this. Okay. There was also a thing called Musically. Um, I, I, I kind of like Musically. That. that was fun. So, all right. But so back the, to the the point. Well, yeah, the accounts that I had um, for a little while, like I think were just fun. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't. I I think uh, let me let me just kind of like start trying to paint a picture with my words to try to help some understanding come. Is that cool? Buckle in, everybody. Buckle Sam in for painting up. with words. Buckle up, yeah, because. This is how I think. I just got to talk. I got to talk to think. What time is it? 45? 45. Yeah. Took 10 minutes to do all that. <laughs> Take five to talk about this. Thank you, James, for stalling. I'm uh, kidding. No, great, great stuff. Uh, let's get into it. Um, I think, I think, uh, so, so yeah, I'll just kind of paint the picture. Overall, I ended up, uh, I ended up getting rid of Facebook, like, at the end of high school. Okay. For no reason other than, like, I just thought it was a bunch of old people on it and, <laughs> It's news and pre- people are pretty negative. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll actually, I, I got to be nicer than that. I loved my Sakona friends on Facebook. <laughs> I loved the people from Sakona yeah, yeah. that I was friends on Facebook. Uh, and then Snapchat. And Braden's making notes of what to edit out. Right Snapchat. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was really, uh, I was really bad at Snapchat. Um, I guess you're good if you have a bunch of streaks. Okay. Um, you know what streaks are like on mm-hmm, Snapchat? Mm-hmm. Some people legit have like hundreds, hundreds of streaks. Right, that's, been, and that's basically for anybody who's not aware. That's just where you're you're sending a picture to somebody daily and they're sending one back. That's what feeds Yeah, them. and it, it keeps the streak going. Yeah. You got to do it every day, kind of on a clock. Like yeah. there's a 24-hour right. period or whatever. Didn't really get into that. Instagram, um, for a long time, there was a there was a little bit of time where on YouTube and Instagram, I thought I was gonna try to become like that that YouTube musician where you're just like recording. I remember that c- cover videos. Do you have a video? I'm gonna keep talking, and you pull up something. We can give people a little sample of. of oh, n- dude, I don't want to do this actually. <laughs> I don't I don't want people to know that. <laughs> there are some videos on YouTube. If you go oh, to bro. YouTube, no, bro, and you search. Come on, for dog. S for real, for real. law music. Are you serious? Is that is that it? That's it. Yeah. S law music. You can find 
12 year old Sam oh, man. playing What Child Is This on the piano. You could find Sam. Doing, I was older than 12. But I don't think you were. I actually probably wasn't. You could find uh, covers of Jack Johnson's Better Together hey, and throw, Angel. Throw up some Better Together, <laughs> Doc. I had a mohawk. Oh, man. I had did. a mohawk. I remember and that these video. These were recorded by Dad. Pull it in, up. The, the yard at the big house, Pull the up. red house, Pull up. as Noah calls it. Um, just I'm, give, I'm gonna give the listeners what they're wanting, bro. It's no combination of words I could put on the back of a boy's car. No song that I could sing, but I could try for your heart. And our dreams, they are made out of real things. Like a shoebox of photographs with sepia tone love. But love is the answer, at least for most of the questions in my heart. Like, why are we here and where do we go and how come it's so hard? It's not always easy, but sometimes life can be deceiving. I'll tell you one thing, it's so much better when we're together. So that was Sam's yeah, intro so into the tomorrow night you see. Uh, the YouTube world of yeah, recorded cover music. I thought about it. I thought about it, and there was there was probably like three or four weeks where I did a consistent video like every week. Yeah. Um, it just wasn't. <laughs> it was, I, uh, it I, lasted a long time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, mm. Uh, he's highly Not, motivated to geez, continue. That's goodness, really hilarious. Um, all, all the while, I don't, I don't, I don't even know. I did not know that you were going to do that today, and so my train right. of thought is just like, whoa, we're, Sorry, so, we're going back in history. So, I got it. I got so it. So yeah. to go from that point to where, like, you know, you're like, oh, you know, I'm on these things. My friends are on these things. I'm, yeah. You know, to to now to where you said, hey, I, I need to be off. Well. What what made that journey? It's important. How did you, it, you make that journey? It, I want to clarify the fact that some decisions that I've made recently have been decisions that I've made um, that are related to more than just social media. Mm. A lot of stuff plays into why I'm thinking the way that I'm thinking. Sure. Why I'm believing the way I'm believing. You know, God's word, all that kind of stuff plays into um, decisions like hey, social media is probably not the best thing for me to have, mm-hmm. honestly. And uh, I want to I want to make it broad like that. And we can but talk a little bit about why social media specifically, I'm off of it. Overall, I think the best way to start the conversation and kind of just jump to the point is God deserves every bit of my attention. Mm-hmm. And he wants my attention. He's also worthy of my attention. Mm -hmm. He's worthy of my affection. If that's a really weird word to use, he's worthy of my thoughts. He's worthy of my motivation, right? That makes sense? And because he has done everything for me and also in Scripture challenged and made it very clear to Christians to love the Lord your God with all your what? Heart, your soul, and your mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm 23. That's young. We made fun of me for it already. But I do know for a fact that I've got to be a student of those three things now. Sure, absolutely. And I've got to be able to think through um, and reflect on what plays into loving the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And I want to keep it that broad uh, because social media for so many people is something that is helpful. Sure. It's something that's a great platform. For me, it was an okay platform. I had a a decent, in my finite mind, I had a decent little following going on or whatever that <laughs> liked keeping up with um, events I would go to or different things like that. And I would try to encourage people. Um, there were a lot of, like, people that I do know um, who who consistently said that I was being encouraging to them, and that was nice to hear. But what it was doing um, all the while was providing me a lot of uh, opportunity to look at what other people were doing as well. Mm-hmm. And that's where, for me, it got a little messy. Mm. And so uh, what do I mean by that? Like looking at other people, well, a couple of things. Definitely the whole comparison thing that can come as a result of social media. Mm. It's like, oh, man, this other musician's writing music faster than me, putting music out. I'm behind. Or this song just came out and got released. This is John Mayer's new technique, and he's doing this live stream video of this pentatonic riff thing that he's loving and digging right now. And... Uh, what it what it was doing to me was like, oh man, creativity. Other people are like being more creative than I am, mm. um, and and I've got to like speed up or I've got to rush and mm. I've got to like 
beat the clock, if I can say it like that. So that was part of at, it. At 20 years old, you're like, I'm behind. I'm serious. Yeah. I'm so yeah. serious um, yeah. at 20 because you, because what social media does give a lot of people the opportunity to do, and this isn't a criticism, this is just kind of how fascinating social media is. And you can say one thing in one split second on social media, and if the right person or crowd sees it and likes it at the right moment, mm -hmm. it can be worldwide. Braden, am I right? It can be worldwide within seconds. That's true. And blow up. Yeah. Um, yeah. You look at young stars, like young musicians who have just taken over like the pop world. Mm -hmm. Go look at like the number of songs that they've put out. My inclination, um, my, my first thought, I would be inclined to think that they probably don't have this library of albums that reflect consistent discipline over years. Now it's like one song that like took hit off. Yeah. and took off. Well, and, and some of that, I mean, a lot of the social media world is driven by algorithm and you know yeah. likes and views, and and they're um, in that that social media marketing world. There are ways to to game the system. Is that is that an accurate way to put that, Braden? Um, yeah. To, and, and as we. Come up, Braden. Yeah, come, come up, here. Here. Braden can input a little come bit here, on this. Come here. Hey, y'all. And the further we go along, it's like you have to be more and more uh, outrageous to rise above the cream of the crop, and that is not sustainable. So I wonder how long that's going to go on before people are just doing crazy, crazy. You know, it's right. like you got to outdo it. It's like the, the extremes are where you get the attention. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you're not, you don't get rewarded for disciplined consistency. And so, which is part of the, which is part, to me, that's part of the dark side of social media. Mm, it is, is that, you know, you don't get, you don't get the middle 80% of perspective. You get the 10% on either end that is most extreme, and those are the voices that rise to the top because that creates the most outrage, it creates the most views, it creates the most, you know, the most clicks, the mo which in turn feeds advertising revenue, and that's where, so it's this cycle of extreme, extreme, extreme. Yes, sir. Yeah, come on. We'll share one more thing. Um, when you see an ad with a spelling mistake in it, it's on purpose. Really? Because people cannot handle um, like the grammar people, they cannot handle when a word is misspelled, so it'll make them comment, which will drive it to the top. Interesting. So ads will con like intentionally call something by the wrong word or misspell something or do something that irks you to get you to engage with it. It's a really smart technique, and it works, so don't fall for it. <laughs> <laughs> so what – thanks so much for that. Thanks so much That's for that. What's fascinating. What is fascinating along those same lines, and I saw this, I saw this kind of becoming like a habit in my mm -hmm. own life. Mm -hmm. Like if if I hadn't done an event or something mm -hmm. in like a while, I was like, oh man, my platform's like shrinking because mm -hmm. I haven't I haven't been anywhere. Mm -hmm. I haven't like posted about yeah. it. If you remember, I posted a lot. Yeah, yeah, you did. And I did a lot, mm -hmm. and I wanted people to see it. And I thought that in the moment that it was like with a good motivation. I think there was some good motivation there. Like I really do think there was some good motivation. But I think overall. It could have been the pot. I think there's a possibility that it could have been the fact that I was insecure hmm. and in the story that God was writing with me. And I was not confident in the fact that, hey, basically his story's enough. Yeah. Yeah. I can be wow. content with his story and with his timing and with his purpose and plan. And so what it looked like practically man is like i think the enemy works like this i'm reading live no lies by john mark coma right now yeah. and i'm a slow reader and i and i think a lot as i read so i'm i'm making my way through the book but i just i read a little bit and then reflect on like my whole life i'm like whoa yeah. where where have i gone wrong <laughs> basically right um if something's true where where did i like i try to track it I heard somebody say one time you fight sin by the cause of it, not the effect. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta look. Get to the root. Get to the root, right? Get to the root. And so I wanted, I wanted to get to the root mm. of my mind because mm. I learned, and so thankful for Ashley Moore. I mentioned him last week in the influencer conversation. So thankful for him because he helped me take some really practical steps in examining my own mind. Mm and where my mind and my belief system both complement each other mm -hmm. and contradict each other. Does that make sense? So like, so like what you're saying, what you're saying is- Break that, it down, yeah. Okay, over 
and you tell me if this is accurate, but what, okay. I, what I'm hearing from you is like social media at first started out as a way to engage with your friends, have yeah, fun, yeah. post some cool totally. stuff, you know. Be annoying to your music. teammates. Yeah, text or DM my <laughs> wall for football <laughs> friends <laughs> right, right, right. and teammates. Um, yeah. But then over time, it became a, a source of, of comparison as you're mm-hmm. looking at what other people are doing. It became a source of almost discontentment uh, if you didn't feel like you were living up to uh, the standard set by maybe even people you didn't even know. Chris Tomlin. Um, yeah, you're looking at, you're as a high schooler, early Joel college Houston kid, from Hillsong. You know, you're looking at all these guys Love that are like at the, not the pinnacle them. of what they do professionally. That's right, that's right. And you're like, I'm not there. And, and so it became a weight. Yep. Rather, it became something that added a burden to your life rather than an outlet for creativity, expression, and encouragement. Uh, it ultimately it really sounds like it became a, a source of discouragement and heaviness. And along those same lines, absolutely right. Everything you just said, yeah. absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Thanks for translating that to like a really clear way to mm-hmm. where people can understand it. What's also interesting that I learned was that while it was doing that, it also offered like some answers mm-hmm. in those, oh man, I'm missing something, but, but here's, here's some. Here's what you should be doing. Here's what here's you should what you, be doing. Yeah. Here's what you should be looking at. Cause there's a bunch of trash on social media as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. So many things are sexualized. Mm-hmm. So many things are politicized and people have a lot of opinions mm-hmm. and f- I'm not gonna make a sweeping generalization, but I would definitely suggest that most people value their own opinion more than other people's <laughs> yeah. opinions. And social, social media is a platform for everybody to have an opinion. It is. Whether your opinion is rooted in reality and truth or not. And as Braden was just t- was like was was telling us, the, the extremes are what's elevated and magnified a lot of times on social media. You're not getting the well thought out. Um, well-nuanced, well-researched opinions, you're getting, you know, these half-baked theories that are, rep- that ultimately a lot of times represent the worst of humanity, not the mm-hmm. best. And, and so you, you mentioned the the way that you believed versus how your mind was actually working. And so, yeah. you know, on one hand, you've got your faith, your belief, your the deep-rooted truths that you know are right. On the other hand, you're taking in all of this social media world into your mind. And so what you're saying is those two worlds kind of came to a point of yeah. conflict. Can I speak to that? Yeah, go for yeah, it. Yeah, so the same limits that your body does. Let's just, <laughs> let, let's, let's look at it like a percentage, okay. okay? Okay. Or a pie, if we can do it like that. A pie, I'm serious, go with me for just a minute. There's 100% of a pie when most people, when most, most people haven't eaten a pre-baked pie, but when you pull the oven door down and you take the pie out, you got all the pie there. Mm -hmm. All right. You start breaking down what occupies your attention, what occupies your mind, what information you, you throw in your mind and you say, all right, Twitter, Twitter's got like a solid 20% of my mind now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I love the office. Love friends, <laughs> but friends. After watching ten, I watched ten seasons of Friends from like June through August <laughs> this summer because Even Braden's impressed by that. Because because some <laughs> of my Braden never sleeps. Because Braden's some of like, my friends like <laughs> <laughs> my fr- some of my friends ironically wanted me to watch it, and yeah, so I was like, yeah. before I moved to Somerville, we're all going to yeah. watch this. Um, and you did it, and I did it. <laughs> um, and so uh, you take that. You take that. 30% mm-hmm. during that time period. And you got, okay, friends and Twitter, mm-hmm. the office and Twitter, two false living realities mm-hmm. between the office and friends. And then Twitter where anybody can be whatever they want to be and say whatever they want to say. Then you add Instagram. Mm-hmm. Let's throw that in there. Yeah, How many you're times? getting everybody's highlights, the best moments of their life, captured, filtered to perfection. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. But just talk about time. Yeah. You're already like half the pie's taken yeah. up. What are they, that, what are they is, is, Braden, what's the phrase? Is it doom scrolling? Is that the phrase? Yeah. Where like yeah. people just get on social media and they just start scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and clicking yeah. and clicking and next thing. Dopamine. Yeah. And it's every, you know, because it's, it's the dopamine hits that your brain likes and it's yeah. like next thing you know, you look up and an hour's gone by and you're like, ah, but what's going on? What's happening? Right. And then, then you take, you know, at the time I was in college, mm-hmm. 
All right, let's add let's add college to that list. Yeah. Let's add, you know, the pressure of when I graduated college, finding a place to live, hmm. a job that's secure. At the time I was in a relationship, let's expand, let's see where that can go. All yeah. the, all yeah. this stuff plays into like what your attention mm-hmm. um what your attention really says about your your beliefs. Mm-hmm. And then after after you've got those are kind of things that I, I feel like most people see as non negotiables mm-hmm. their entertainment, mm-hmm. their education, and their occupation. Sure. And then you throw family in the mix. Mm-hmm. Okay. That just got a whole lot more serious because a lot of people have some pretty crazy stories when it comes to family. That's emotional stuff. That's historical stuff. That's like, you know, it's experiential. It can also, you know, make it or break it for you. Some a lot of great families, yeah. et cetera. And then you're like, all right, let's let's take those things that I can't really ignore and let's try to like, let's try to work in and slide in my own personal faith. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And let's take in how much time am I spending filling my mind with like what's true? Because mm. what does the Bible say in New Testament? It says whatever's good, whatever's pure, whatever's honorable, think on these, think on these things. things. Yep. If you're not thinking on those things, how in the world is Sam Lawson in 2023, 2022, 2021, how is he going to operate and think? Yep. He's not. He's, yep. he's going to end up like I did dealing with some – Pretty negative thoughts, pretty regularly, feeling sorry for himself, feeling anxious, and I and I am worked up right now because it's so, <laughs> it's so real, and it affects so many more people than people are willing to talk about. But I was given some great advice by Ashley, and it was just so blunt. Talking, we were eating wings, dude. We were eating <laughs> wings at lunchtime, and Ashley said, he said man, do you, do you think that God depends on your social media platform hmm. to accomplish what he's going to accomplish through you? And that's the lie, right? That I've got to be present in this space because everybody's present in this space and this it's space the, can't make it without me. But even though it's mentally messing with me and leaving me in a, this dark this dark place, yeah. I got to be here. I got to be, I, I need to be here. I need to, I yeah. have to. Yeah. I'm worried if I'm not here. Yeah. I feel disconnected. You know what's been crazy as a result? And this is this is some stuff that we can celebrate through. And this conversation, we can really have this conversation for like hours upon hours. But not today on the podcast. But not today on the podcast. <laughs> but what what is true and yeah. cool is since then, you know how much more creative I've been? Yeah. As far as like having space to think. Mm-hmm having inspirational thoughts to actually write songs about space and time to read the Bible. And you gave me some great advice, some of the best that I've ever been given. Do you remember when you said this to me on the phone? You said, man, for the next little bit, this was kind of right after I just put off of social media and um, I was thinking about a lot of stuff at that time. And you said, stop trying to turn what you're walking through into applications for other people. Stop trying to turn them into phrases of lyrics and melodic little sequences and patterns. You said, stop trying to write and just go to God, just go to his word for more of him. Mm -hmm. You said, and as a result of that, if he gives you a song, great. If he doesn't, you still have God. Yep, that's it. Which is every bit of enough for me. That's sufficient it's plenty it's more than i deserve you know yeah. and and that that has led to even more thoughts um and and here's just a challenge i guess to to the listeners and and to peers or people who are older if you haven't spent time learning about what occupies your mind mm-hmm. that's good simple encouragement do it yeah no man i love that i love that at 23 years old you're thinking at that level going, you know, Hey, what, what is, what is filling my heart, my soul, my mind, what is getting my attention, my affection, my time? Um, you know, Jesus said where your treasure is there, your heart will be. And, and, and and a lot of times we make the application there to, you know, he's talking about where your money is, where your resources are, but I think it can also be where, you know, where your attention is, the things that occupy your mind, the things that, um, mentally take up 
time and space and effort, um, you know, that really is a great check on, on where our hearts are. So, um, yeah, I think that's a great encouragement today just to, to ask the question, you know, is, is my social media usage adding value to my life? And, and if it's not, how, how can I, how can I use, how can I use the platform for good, for the glory of God, or, or maybe for a season, you know, would it be helpful for me to, to create some space in my life so that I can hear from God? Really, that's, I think to me, I would even say the heart of what, what we're saying. I'll even say, make it bigger than social media. Sure. What, what in your life occupies the space in your ears? Mm, that's good. What occupies it? What voices have have your attention? And I love the verse that yep. you you were quoting earlier, Philippians four eight. Whatever is true, yep. whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there's anything excellent, anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And then Paul says, what you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. And and here's what you said earlier: the God of peace will be with you. And that's the goal. Amen. That's the amen. Goal. Can, and can I can I just Say one more thing. Yeah, close it out. Like this, this is like the opposite of a joke. Hmm. This is so serious, and this, like, this whole episode and like the content. Like, you, you, you said, man, I'm so proud of you for being like 23 and and recognizing this. The point that I recognized this was in, was when I was on my back, like crying and shaking, and like there was nothing else. Hmm to run to yeah. other than yeah. my father, who's like, Sam, I've been here the whole time, bro, and you haven't even noticed me. Yeah. Pay yeah. attention, I'm here. Wow. That's it, like, I, I, I mean, and and I say that not to like put a Debbie Downer on the day because it's raining outside today, <laughs> but I say that because there might be somebody next to you at work, hmm. or there might be somebody who's in your family that's in the back seat that you just need to ask, man, how can I help Break down what you're taking in. Yeah. What's really going on? What's really on the going inside? on? Where's your mind? Where's your heart? How, Let's stop uh, playing yeah. the game. That's it. That's Let's it. just stop playing. It ain't time to play. No time to play the game. No. No time to play the game. That's it. And Jesus came to renew, to redeem, to restore. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're believing yeah, for. Yeah. For you, wherever you're at today, whatever's yeah. going on in your life, that 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 God's got the power to redeem what the enemy has done in your life. He's got the power to restore in the, in the language of scripture to restore what the locusts have destroyed. Yeah. You know, and that's a, that's, that's a, that's a great little metaphor. You know, that's, there are a lot of little locusts that will destroy your peace, rob you of your joy, um, just darken, darken things in your mind. And we serve a God who has the power to break through with his light into those settings. And who actually already says he is victorious over those things. Good stuff. That's Embrace the victory that That's you already have in Christ. Oh, good word, man. Hey, we've talked long enough yep. for today. Let's shut this episode down. Just a reminder, yep. new podcast little, uh, is going to drop every Monday. Uh, new schedule there. Um, and that's so that we can get feedback from you before we do our next episodes. We want to hear from you. Uh, you can send us an email. Uh, you can give us a call at the church office. You can reach out to us on social media. And we're going to use social media me. for good. Just not <laughs> Sam. Yep. <laughs> um, but if this is uh, if this is helpful, if this is encouraging, if you're enjoying uh, what uh, what we're trying to accomplish here, uh, like this podcast, share it, rate it, review it, share it on your social media. Let's flood social media with good um, and help Braden with his job. That's so, it. That's it. Uh, Braden, thanks, man, for being here with us today. Sam, dude, seriously, thanks so much for sharing your story. We'll be back next Monday. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening to the Lawson Brothers podcast. Yeah. Have a great. Blue Flame Day. See ya.